now is what photographers call the magic hour. I've just spotted another great shot. I'm gonna try and put together a series of stitched images. I'm hoping for a really exciting shot. That's exactly what we want. I've got two lights set up and we've got this lovely wooden line. The exposure range is just too great. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor and in today's little mini tutorial, I just want to go over what I call batch processing images. And it's basically something that we need to do when you've got lots of image files that you need to supply to a client and you might need to supply them in different formats and different sizes. So I'm just going to show you my sort of workflow setup. I've got Lightroom open here at the moment, which is a program that I use regularly for organizing my files, for uh, star rating my images and sorting them out, making color contrast adjustments. And then I take the final images over into Photoshop for any you know, fine tuning tweaks there um, or any manipulative work that needs to be done. But before we get to that stage, um, I've got to prepare the images. So here's a shoot that um, I've got on screen at the moment. And this was a, a shoot that I did for a friend of mine who owns uh, this really nice, luxurious bar. It's a sort of cocktail bar and restaurant. And he wanted me to capture some images that showed the ambience of the place and that he could use for his advertising and also for um, some artwork on the walls of the actual bar itself. And if we just have a quick flick through the um, catalogue of images, you can see some of the sort of abstract details that I've took on various uh, drinks that he's got there, um, different bar settings and situations, just almost little detail shots that would make good artwork or something a little bit interesting. And you can see the variety of sort of pictures that I've captured here, some of the different products that he uses. And uh, there's one even of the DJ decks. And then um, I've got some of the actual barman working, uh, making cocktails here. And um, I've converted those into black and white in Lightroom and got a variety of different images of the barman in action making these cocktails. Now, um, what I want to do now is I want to create a folder of images from my raw files, which are full resolution raw files. And I want to get these files into a format that I can supply to the customer. So the first thing I want to do is select all of the images that um, I want to use. And I can just simply hit Apple A on the keyboard to bring all of those images selected. If I go to library mode up here, I can see all of the ones that I've star rated at four star um, and above as my selection. And then I just go into file, export in Lightroom on the menu there. And then I can choose the specific folder that I want these files to be exported to. So I choose the folder red bar, say choose. And then further down, we've got the file setting options. And I've got image format TIFF, uh, no compression, uh, the color space that I want, uh, Adobe RGB or Pro Photo, whatever I want to choose, 16-bit uh, image, and then the image size. Now, at this stage, I'm going to keep the images in an, in, um, an Adobe RGB color space. I'm going to uh, set it to resize the long edge of the images to 3,600 pixels, or I could set this in centimeters to 30 centimeters, giving me an A4 size image. And then I can tell it to export that at 300 dots per inch, which is the resolution for printed magazines or printed brochures where these images may end up. And I just simply hit export, and you'll see up in the top left here that now Lightroom is doing its calculations, doing its thing to export all of those files at the dimensions and format that I specified. Now, I could have specified those to be exported as JPEGs, but I don't like to export images as JPEGs and then JPEGs again and again because that recompression can lower the quality of the images. Also, I can't work with the 16-bit image in a JPEG format. And as I say, I will 
um, maybe want to do some more work on these images in Photoshop. Now, uh, in real terms, what I'd normally do is I'd actually export these images at full size. I wouldn't actually choose to resize the image at all. I'd export them in their full resolution into a folder for um, the next stage that I'm going to work on in Photoshop. And I'll show you that as soon as this export has finished. Okay, so Lightroom has now completed exporting those 46 uh, image files. And as I said, I could have exported those at full resolution and then done some further downsizing or something later on. But just to speed it up, I've actually downsized those initially in Lightroom just to show you that that can be done as well. So um, let's imagine that my client has now um, spoke to me and said, yes, I'm really happy with those images. Um, those are the ones I want to use. And can I have those in a reduced JPEG size for use on my website? And also, can I have them in A5 size as TIFF files uh, because I've got some small adverts that I want to run? So what would we do in that situation? Well, I can um, open up the images that I've just saved. There they are. There's the 46 files that were exported from Lightroom. And if I go into Photoshop, let me just open up Photoshop here. There's a great little tool in Photoshop in File, Scripts, Image Processor. And I really love this feature in Photoshop, a fantastic little feature. If you click on that, I can then, it brings up this panel. And on that panel, I can choose the folder that I want to apply this to. So I just find, navigate to my folder red bar, say choose or open. And then I can say save in the same location. And then I can choose a couple of extra options here on the file type. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give him some JPEGs suitable for his website. And let's say the customer has already told me that I want these images to be, um, let's say, 600 pixels uh, wide or 600 pixels high, no bigger than that. And a quality of nine, say, will be sufficient. And I want to convert them to an sRGB profile automatically so that they're better suited to web browsers and that color space. But I also want to supply them with a set of TIFFs as well. So I can choose save a set as TIFFs. And I can choose that I want to resize those TIFFs to A5 size, which is about 2,500 pixels. And I'll set that in there so it keeps it within that constrained size. You could also check that extra tab to save them as uh, PSD Photoshop documents as well. Um, I don't really need that at the moment. And I can also embed my copyright information in each image. So I'll just put Carl Taylor Photography in there. And rather than having to go in and individually open these images and save and resize each one in two versions, I can now just hit the Run button and Photoshop will open each image and resize one as a TIFF to the, the specified dimensions that I said and also to the specified dimensions for the JPEG um, with the color profile as well that I selected. And it's created two additional folders in my folder, one for JPEGs and one for TIFF files. And it's quickly running through those 46 images and putting them down into these two folders for me, ready to give to the client. And it's such a time saver because it's a fantastic way of delivering your images quickly to a client without any fuss and knowing that they are all in exactly the correct format. And that should be pretty much almost finished there. So you can see it working on two images sizes as we go, one JPEG, one TIFF. And just coming to the end now, there we go. So I've got a JPEG folder here now. And in that JPEG uh, folder, I've got 46 images. And if I open any one of those images, they've been reduced down in size to an image size of 600 by 400 pixels because I specified the longest side to be 600 pixels. And if I go back, I've also got a TIFF folder. And each one of my TIFF images is set to the dimensions that I set, which was for 2,500 pixels on the longest edge. And all the images are ready to go and deliver straight to the client without any fuss 
and in a very quick, uh, non-time consuming process. So that gives you an idea on batch processing using Lightroom and Photoshop. Right now is what photographers call the magic hour. I've just spotted another great shot. I'm gonna try and put together a series of stitched images. I'm hoping for a really exciting shot. That's exactly what we want. I've got two lights set up and we've got this lovely wooden line. The exposure range is just too great. 